Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Bonner, broadcasting from here on the island of Maui, and I have a very, very special edition today of the Victor of Light Radio Show. I'm interviewing Corey Good, one of the top whistleblowers in the world at this time, really coming out with some amazing information. And for those of you who know me, I worked closely with Cobra in the past, and I have also worked with prepare for change and creating some information about uh, the coming changes. And, and Corey Good, for those of you who know, is bringing out a lot of information in his life in the secret space program. I'm not going to go into too much into the history. I have a kind of idea here that this is going to be kind of an advanced interview for people who've already been following Corey's information. For those of you who haven't watched all the Gaia TV episodes, I strongly recommend you do so. These contain a lot of information. Uh, you can go to uh, Corey's website. We'll be talking about that in a second. But I'm going to bring out information here. I'm going to try and set the playing field and, and give us a clear understanding of what's going on out there. And I've already spoken to Corey. We're going to bring up some suppositions and, and test the limits and kind of see if we can get some understanding on what we call the glass pads and the Secret Space Program, the Earth-Based Alliance, and their views and their position here. So we're going to get into quite a, a few different little things, kind of uh, slightly political to get a clarity here. And then we're going to go into some of this information. So much to go forward here today. And so I'm going to try to keep my questions to a minimum, but I will be setting uh, the groundwork for some of this information. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Corey Good and uh, just bring him on, and we're going to get started here. Corey, it's a wonderful pleasure. We've spoken several times in the last seven or eight months on the phone, and um, it's really an honor to get to know you and uh, to have you on the show. So I want to welcome you to the Victory of Light radio show. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? Really good. I'd like to, if we can, right away, there may be some people, I'm going to doubt it, who haven't heard of your information, but why don't you share uh, some of your uh, websites and where people can connect with you of course, I've missed uh, Guy MTV. If you could give some websites where people can follow up with your information to help support your mission. Sure. My main website is sphereBeingAlliance.com, and uh, that's where you can find a lot of my news updates, uh, transcripts to all of the shows um, that uh, David Wilcock and I have done, uh, Gaia Television, uh, our show is Cosmic Disclosure, and uh, that's on GaiaTV.com. If you want to sign up for a subscription, if you go to blueavians.com, that way David and I get uh, some sort of credit for it. And we also starting up a new project, which is the fulldiscloseproject.org. That's good. I want to uh, just move forward into the interview here. Uh, folks, for those of you, I'm going to give a very brief history here. Corey Good was part of uh, a unique, talented group of children that was uh, researched and chosen by the government to become what is known as an intuitive empath. Um, and he became part of a secret space program, which really absolutely, folks, reads like the most outrageous, crazy sci-fi television show that the average person can look at this material and just roll their eyes and just call this a bunch of junk and a bunch of uh, made-up stuff and disinformation and a lot of uh, stuff that people cannot just wrap their heads around it. I've been having experiences, folks, since 1970s, and it's been a long time, and I've been expecting this type of disclosure and information to come out. I've spoken many years ago about uh, when the secret space program uh, military guys come out. It's going to make the average contactee look like a choir boy, and that's what's happening here. We're getting tremendous amounts of information in regards to the history of the current Earth civilization's development and technology and the line that it's followed. Corey has gone into outer space, worked for 20 years, come back, and then actually been physically regressed to a youth again and uh, lived uh, many years with these memories and eventually has been able to come out and share this information with the public. There's a unique situation in that the we could call them the good guys of the of the American or the world space, I guess mostly American uh, secret space program, probably the most advanced secret space program that we know of, have decided to have broken some of their control mechanisms and 
I guess we could call it programming, and have decided to uh, come out against their masters in the international space conglomerate and to reveal information. So they uh, had their own uh, ideas. They're kind of militarily oriented, and they have their own liaison, a gentleman named Gonzalez, which you can read about. And out of the blue, the Blue Sphere beings uh, say that they want Corey Good in, and this was kind of uh, upset the apple cart, so to speak, and kind of have a, a hostile a contentious, as Corey says, uh, relationship in regards to him. They don't trust Corey, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about here. But Corey, when I look at you being chosen here, it seems almost like the perfect choice because you are not involved with the secret space program. There's no uh, necessary alliances there. You're not treated really well by them. And it seems as though you're a more of an impartial observer. And this is allowing the general public to get a direct, let's call it a bird's eye view on the situation. I think it's pretty clear, you know, when you were going to go up the Dracos and all the things that they wanted to do with you in one of those meetings, that you, if you look at it, I was looking at it and go, you know, even if they did something to Corey, God forbid, and you're protected and they didn't. But the point is, is someone else could take your place. I'm sure there's another intuitive empath or, or a backup plan that could do this. So you are really just like a, a camera. And I think they realize that now. And there's anything that they want to do, they can just replace the camera. And there's no agenda here. So I'd like you to, if you could, to start off with you know, a thanks and a gratitude from the world for your coming forward with this information. I'd like you to talk about your first meeting with the Blue Sphere Alliance. If you could tell me if they had more personal interaction with you than when you first talked. If you could talk about the first meeting and their kind of mission statement for you as it was. Yeah, my first meetings were definitely all more of a of a personal, spiritual nature information that I still want to keep personal, but also were starting to prepare me for things that were coming down the pipe. And uh, so I don't know exactly what you're looking for, but I mean, it was personal stuff, things that, you know, I needed to do to grow, things that I wasn't doing at the time because, you know, I was stubborn, you know, I wasn't getting on a high vibratory diet. I wasn't you know, spending as much time uh, in meditation as I should. And, you know, they were trying to get me, you know, in a more high vibratory state. And, uh, you know, in the beginning, I was resistant, I guess, on, maybe on a subconscious level. I wasn't just saying, oh, okay, well, I'll do that then. <laughs> it it always took something uh, occurring, you know, to like some sort of catalyst. Like, I finally got on the high vibratory diet at our last shoot at Guyam when I uh, had food poisoning so bad at the beginning of the shoot. And we shot, I think, 10 episodes is all we were able to shoot that week because I was just deadly ill. And after that, my body just totally reject meat. All I eat is fruit and vegetables. And I'm constantly eating, but that's all I eat. And uh, so I somewhat refused to go on this uh, high vibratory diet and, uh, you know, things occurred to steer me that way anyway. Very good. So, yeah, you're preparing the vessel for the work to connect your, I guess we call it your higher self, your I am present or what you call uh, the resonance center to uh, receive this information and to be prepared in a, to assimilate these higher vibrations. When I was talking about identification and information, what I was wondering about is, did they tell you uh, anything about your past lives? And did you get an overview of the uh, situation and the political thing you're going on with a mission? Or has that kind of been kept from you? I've been asked a couple times if I wanted to know who I was, who I am, and who I will be, whatever that means. I assume that that means past lives and, and all that. But uh, something has told me that I, I don't need to know that, and that has been my response, I, that I don't need to know that right now. Well, okay, I understand that. You don't need to know that as far as your past. But I, I meant kind of like in your relationship to them and that kind of thing. The other thing I'm wondering about is, uh, did you speak about philosophy and kind of vetting them for what is uh, – their belief and their agenda and what is the information uh, that they wish to 
convey uh, through you to the world? These are not conversations like I'm having with you right now. It's taken a while for me to learn. The way they communicate is so cryptic. They're so big about uh, not violating free will. And they provide information. And when I tell David, you know, when I would communicate with David Wilcock after a briefing, he would say that, you know, that's how they communicate things in the law of one. And I'd be like, okay, I have no idea why, but it's, you know, it's a bit frustrating, you know, and, uh, you know, and it's uh, just the way, you know, these higher density beings are. We try to overlay our third, fourth density way of thinking on top of them. And uh, that's just not going to fly. <laughs> These beings are on a totally different wavelength, literally. And uh, they're uh, basically talking down or coming down to communicate with us. And uh, these, uh, this nonverbal communication does not occur a linear form like a sentence or a conversation would. The communication occurs in images and smells and tastes and all the different sensory input types that you can think of right so it's a full kind of telepathic communication where you get a lot of information and at this point in time the details it's kind of open-ended for you you know i do have a question because uh, a lot of the uh, contactees and even the scientific uh, contactees that i've spoken with who are working with probably in the super confederation alliance of 40 world uh, seem to indicate a very kind of a spiritual inner orientation, which uh, you have uh, bought out in your interviews, but it hasn't been really like at the forefront. And I think that's because obviously we don't want to get people wrapped up into religion and polarization. We want this information to come out. And yet there is, um, I guess we could call it the law of one or a spiritual orientation. What I would um, postulate when it comes to God, and I'm going to go to the Wendell Stevens book with the I Argon group that kind of look like a, uh, a ape, but the, they postulate that there's basic axioms for understanding God. Like people go, is, is it God or is it uh, evolution? And I would say that God created evolution. And when I say God, I do not need an anthropomorphic being, a guy in a throne. I'm talking about a divine intelligence that knows the beginning from the end and has a, a plan for uh, souls and certain laws of the universe. We could call it the law of one or whatever. And their axioms are this, that something cannot come from nothing. So we are something, therefore we came from something. That something would be called the creator. The alternate paradoxical axiom is that that source that's created us uh, had to come from something. So there's really no empirical, logical, dualistic mind way of, of saying that there is a God. And yet it's kind of like if it's just a, a materialistic, random, a materialistic universe, it leaves it quite cold. And they assure us that this is not the case, that there is a, a reason and a purpose and that the power of love is the binding force of the universe and, and is, in fact, the nature of all creation. We could call it the divine intelligence, source, creator. I don't want to pop anyone's boat in religion, but can you talk about your understanding or if they've mentioned to you anything about uh, the creator or the positive, um, uh, looking at the glasses half full through faith as opposed to demanding rational explanations for everything? Well, most of what's been communi communicated to me is uh, basically uh, their beliefs, most of their beliefs go back to something of a, a oneness, that there is a, an intelligent resonant field. And this intelligent resonant field, this resonant field creates a, a geometric pattern that is the basis of matter, that creates matter. And then this matter is intelligently manipulated within the different fields and torsion fields that have consciousness that's you know a part of this uh, resonant conscious conscious resonant field and uh, you know that they call the create you know that we all call the creative source or that 
uh, David Wilcock called the source field in his book. There are many names for it. Right. All names uh, would belong to this, and anything that we could use with our mind would limit the infinite mind of this source field. I'm not uncomfortable with the word creator. I have another uh, question for you. We had spoke previously privately, and you had mentioned that part of your implant removal process was to invoke uh, the name of Jesus Christ. And when you had spoken about this uh, to uh, Rotier, you stated that he bowed and acknowledged you. And I'm wondering, <laughs> was this kind of a, did you get a sense like this was, uh, yeah, whatever, dude, bow? Or was it kind of like, a, yes, we acknowledge that source of uh, information? They acknowledged that source of power. Thank you. These were, uh, it was a, you said implants, and I guess that could be a terminology, but uh, these were entity attachments. Right. Okay. Entity yeah. attachments. Yeah. I was going to talk about that a little bit in the future. I want to talk a little bit about the term breakaway. Now, according to one of my friends who's passed over, Dr. Frank Stranges, who was working with one of um, a, a gentleman named Commander Valiant Thor, he claims to have gone to Venus with him as well as to some inner earth positive civilizations. And he had mentioned in the Mayans and some of the civilizations that some of the ones that healed you that now moved to the Pleiades. The word breakaway kind of sounds like competition and someone moving on. It seemed to me from the explanation that was given to me for this group was that they had reached a level of community and um, bifurcation is more accurate. They just kind of split off, split away. Right. Well, at that point in the world, they weren't that much in communication with other parts of the world, and there wasn't a world, one world order kind of thing. They just basically bifurcated. They decided to, their predilection was to move beyond the inner earth and to go elsewhere. So there are other groups, you would agree, that are, are not necessarily along the lines and agenda of the secret space program, international conglomerate that are separate from us, but are, are not necessarily hostile to us or breaking away in that sense, correct? That are a part of our current era? That brings us to another question, but let me just say, the question would be, you would agree that there's other, in the history of our Earth, there have been groups of people from the surface that have basically either moved in the inner Earth or off the planet. Absolutely, um, okay. yes. Our recent breakaway civilization thing that has occurred it is not a phenomenon that has occurred for the first time on this planet there have been other civilizations that developed to a certain point and then of course you know the priesthood who guard the knowledge and the science and are were also the science class you know guarded this information and kept it and them and the elites just like us and our elites you know, kept that information and segmented themselves away from their general population. Okay. One of the things that I've heard about from my understanding of what we call the inner earth would be that there is a positive Agartha network that you haven't mentioned in any of your talks. And we, we can go into that a little bit, but we talk about there was things, they were called the raws. And we talk about raw tier air. And according to some sources from the Atlantean civilization at the time of the foreseen cataclysms that were coming due to misuse of technology, and I guess the basic battles going on between these farmer groups, that some of the spiritual centers around the planet uh, chose to go inside the earth and created a Nagartha network, and they were called the Ra's. And beneath uh, Giza is Ra, beneath the Himalayas is Ra Ma. There was beneath the Bermuda Triangle called Ra Yolo. There's another civilization called Posidid. Underneath Mount Shasta is called Ra Mu. And there's many other ones, I, I imagine. Where does this information come from? Uh, this information uh, comes from what is known as the great white brother sisterhood and this is one of the things i was kind of curious about uh, to address because uh, some of your experiences with the inner earth groups the omegans and the groups it seems as though they're not very far evolved i mean they have a beautiful technological civilization 
there, but you know, there's still fear. I mean, 18 million years and the that group is in there projecting themselves and making telepathic communications out of fear to they're connecting with people to give them benevolent information, but they're using subterfuge to protect their location as uh, any group would do, you know, for, you know, protecting your home base and, and your assets and, and all of that. Yeah, I can kind of see that on, on another level. I was kind of thinking, you know, there would be more of a positive open interaction. And I think that's what that's what they're lobbying for. And, and the reason there hasn't been that is that back during close to the time of after Muhammad, there was a major treaty signed among all of these groups, and it had to do with open contact walking among humanity. And it had to do with letting us develop on our own with only them skirting the rules with mild and, uh, you know, manipulating from the background through human proxy agents, mostly. So this is one of the things that the Anshar have uh, requested to have a a meeting with the Super Federation to see if um, this uh, treaty can be revisited. Is this treaty between the inner Earth groups of the Agartha? All the groups in the solar system abide by this treaty, even the Draco. There was open warfare in our skies, above our planet, up till even our current historical era between all these groups until this treaty was signed. Okay. For, I guess uh, that leads me to another question here. So they've all had this treaty, which I call the quarantine, and it's based on to keep things so there's not battles in the skies, but there still are. So it, obviously this... Tra- not only that, but not allowing them to be seen and walk among us, to allow us to develop our society without direct physical interaction and manipulation by them, even though, as always, it seems in all these cosmic treaties and rules, there's little ways in the background for the benevolence and others to circumvent parts of the treaties. Obviously, the bad guys are circumventing this clearly. One of the gentlemen that I uh, sent you a link to, his name is Bob Renaud. It's called the Terracor Files, and it's a group of uh, extraterrestrials, not in the Confederation, but in the Alliance. And I'd like to share with you, you know, one of the things that, that they have stated is that this is a Confederation world. And so, as such, it does not have any uh, protection from itself. And they said that they have discovered that in the 1800s, a group called the Omegans came to Earth and infiltrated us and are using subterfuge and violation of those agreements and are infiltrating as they have on many different worlds through the political and the military process. And they keep the people at each other's throats. The Alliance is also infiltrated the earth through a technology which they talk about which is basically they can have their life form body from another world they step into a portal and they disappear and they show up on earth in a human physical body that is adjusted and is kind of like a holographic relationship to the soul that can exist in our environment so they are definitely Uh, involved as sleeper agents in all aspects of society and religion and media and science and military, political, and uh, things of this nature. Do you have any information about the positive groups working to stem this, these other groups who are seeking a parasitical nature with us? Can you be a little bit more specific about which negative groups? I mean, you gave a lot of details there about, uh, these people you gave me links to, there's a lot of different parasitic relationships going on. And, um, you know, on the etheric level and even on the physical level on relationships every day, you know, with that people have in their lives or parasitic relationships. Right. Well, I'm talking more specifically about an intention world that's coming here to infiltrate this planet, to use its resources and to subjugate the people through a new world order type of technology. I'm talking about the reptilians, the greys, and some of these human groups even, which I would 
say that we're like the, some people call them the Omegans or the Calrans. And these groups generally don't like to work together. But according to this gentleman, some of them are forced to work together like the enemy of my enemy is my friend, so to speak. So he talks about these different groups that are actually, we would call them down here from our perspective, the forces of light. And it seems as though the raw to your ear is viewing the same thing, kind of like there's been a lot of interference here and they're here to kind of clear the playing field. Is that correct? Yes, they have stated that their main purpose has been to basically interact with the humanity's co creative mass consciousness in a uh, symbiotic way, work directly with that mass consciousness to help it determine its path and, and future outcome. And that's the high level area of what they've been doing. And the low level area of what they've been doing is more on, on the level of, you know, speaking to me or to these other you know, communicating to these other beings, because when their presence was first made known, all of these beings were trying to hail them and get in contact with them, but they were not being acknowledged. Right. So obviously they're not being acknowledged. Uh, I've heard reports that some of these ships were here from the 70s, but I have another. Um... I wouldn't doubt if, and they're not ships, but I wouldn't doubt if these spheres have been here since you know, probably, you know, many, many decades before that, if not longer. Yes. And, and a lot of our information here is uh, based on our physical plane experience. And so I have another question for you. How far up in the dimensions has, if you know, is the cabal or the New World Order secret space program been able to go? Um, I know that uh, some of the technology allows them to travel on the astral plane where time doesn't exist through these beam ship portal technologies that you've discussed, but I'm kind of curious. Well, uh, they, they're able to travel to other realities or dimensions. There's, you know, there's one reality that they've traveled back and forth in between. Now, most of the travel that I'm aware of has to do with travel within our solar system and um, the information I have of travel outside of our solar system with vessels and through portals. Okay. So we don't know exactly what dimensions. It's kind of not really known or deciphered at this point. Well, that's really hard. You know, dimensions, that's like, you know, if you're looking at a crystal or a diamond, those are different facets, different realities, timelines. You know, dimensions and densities are not the same thing. So there's a lot of confusion out there. You know, people, you know, talking about going to, they're going to go to another dimension or another density. These other density beings, you know, their their consciousness and their molecules, are, they're vibrating. Their frequency is vibrating at a, at a higher frequency than ours. And there are higher vibratory beings. And, um, you know, I've physically touched and interacted with, you know, with them. And they have the ability, as they get higher and higher frequency, to just change themselves into complete energy and portal, for lack of a better word, or teleport wherever they like. They just change the frequency of their consciousness to the frequency of the location they want to be and they shift to that location right these are some of the higher beings i wanted to go into that in just a second but i wanted to confirm what you you talked about the spaceships uh the beam ship technology has cameras above and below at the bottom of the ship and as you said they have these the star pathways are mapped out and so at certain times uh, when the uh, there's less star systems in between they can go much quicker and they basically project where they are uh, where they want to be and they just jump and they're there well they, they really don't use cameras they have uh, uh remote imaging that uh, is nothing like anything we yeah obviously it's an integrated the astral pathways and the numbers are all mapped into this uh, super consciousness thing this is another thing i wanted to ask you i personally have had uh, uh initiation experiences in regards to leaving my body when I was very young and having experiences which I believe are uh, positive benevolent forces. And in my experiences, Corey, I recognize that I am a luminous being. I was actually able to look down and to see 
I guess you could call it the soul or the light body that was the physical body was encased in it and um, I looked down below my navel uh, and I saw that I had these filaments that would reach out and touch the world and in Carlos Castaneda Don Juan they were this is called will there are supposedly various points on the body that correspond to physical organs like the spleen would be the dreaming we have what is called the tonal and the nogwal which are different points of the body the, the the center of feeling is at the tip of the breastbone reason is in the mind and I'm I actually experienced that on my luminous body there's a position called death and it was to my left as it was stated and I actually could reach out and touch it it was like a, a yellowish field and when I touched it and acknowledged it it kind of filled me with a higher light vibratory energy and I'm wondering in the secret space program or in your contacts with the Blue Sphere Alliance if you had any experiences of this nature understanding the luminous self and how it is different than the physical body and what that type of uh, uh, information and knowledge uh, you might share with us. Well, yeah, when we were going through the MyLab programs, we were constantly being put through programs where, or put through uh, processes where we were having out-of-body experiences and, um, and, and through the remote viewing and remote influencing training, we were, you know, do the visualizations and uh, the experiments to where we were uh, leaving our bodies and then looking at our light bodies and expanding our light bodies and that kind of a thing. Can you describe the light body? I mean, for me, I actually, it looked like someone had bundled up uh, some hair. There were luminous filaments, almost hairy like a, a spider's leg, and they were within my body. And it was a very, you know, kind of like a, a separate reality type of thing. Ken, did you? With us, we, we were uh, told to picture it this way. So I guess it was uh, some sort of front loaded in, into my way of perceiving it. But um, it, it appears as a bright uh, uh, energy field with different color and size orbs uh, floating around. And, um, we would then float around inside the light body and visit orbs and um, uh, visit the orbs for information. And um, the orbs were uh, said to be a conduit to our higher selves or a symbol of a conduit to our higher selves. And um, a lot of what occurs with people is that uh, we're in communion subconsciously with our higher selves all the time. And our higher selves um, is very very much connected into the, the root of source and we're being fed and given a lot of information that way, you know, and, and a lot of people have a real high connection to a real close connection to their higher self and uh, our higher self and our uh, conscious self will, our conscious self will take information from our higher self and um, present it to us in different ways. So sometimes will perceive some mystical or uh, spiritual experiences. And it is a mystical and a spiritual experience between you and your higher self receiving some very advanced information. Uh, but, you know, we perceive it as something else because uh, consciously uh, from our belief systems or from our experiences, we're front loading the experience. And that's not all cases. That's some cases. Very good. That seems like filtering it through the programming. And I wanted to offer for you that we are, as David Wilcox says, this toroid, this fractal of light. Uh, when you look from the top, it's a toroid. If you look from the front, the anode and the cathode of the, the human light electromagnetic vehicle, the anode and the cathode of the brain and the base of the spine, that you look like a butterfly. One of the shaman's explanations is that from our resonance center, that we are projecting an assemblage point on our luminous self that we perceive things from. And in the, some of the ancient mythology and technology that I guess part of our problem is that we have these programs and belief systems that allow us to only experience the omniverse from one assemblage point and one perspective. 
that becomes a lens. We see everything through that lens. New information comes out and we pull out our accumulated experiences and belief systems out of our pocket and dust it off, shine it up on our shirt real quick and hold that lens up to the new information, which is some would call incoming light. And then that light is refracted through that lens of our experiences and belief systems. Right. And they said that uh, a man of knowledge or who follows the path with heart must be more fluid in his understanding where reason is not a despotic guard, but should be a broad-minded guardian to more higher dimensional, be able to receive the multidimensional information that's coming in from different levels. Yes, and that and self-doubt, wisdom and self-doubt go hand in hand, because once you feel like you've got everything locked up, you've closed yourself off to any further growing. A wise person may think, you know, we may sit there and and think we have things all figured out, but we're wise enough to listen to other information and to keep our reality bubbles permeable for new information. But, you know, then again, we're running it through our filter of our experiences and belief systems. Right. I wanted to talk about that filter of the lower personality vehicle, which uh, is the physical body, and to state that some of these hostile groups like the Dracos that have an advanced awareness of this light body that they have, uh, as I understand, there are, if you've ever heard of the Enneagram, or there are nine points, uh, you're the giver, you're the, they have different psycho, uh, psycho spiritual terms for the type of personality. And according to these light beings that we have these, what are called fixations, which um, are are these filters and beliefs that we've held that have become very rigid, and there's nine of them. And the ancient Hindu scriptures have a mythology of Kali, this girl holding a skull, and um, she's got nine skulls and a knife, and that it looks like a, a, a deadly evil thing, but it represents the cutting of the attachments uh, to these viewpoints to allow us to hear more from our resonance center. So there are these fixations. So I'm wondering, it seems like the secret space program and all of these guys, everything that they're doing is geared along the lines of the black monks for control and power. And that um, all of the, the things that you've described, so for the most part, have been this historical breakaway civilization with the Nazis, which is just fascinating. And uh, I don't doubt a bit of it. Um, you know, every single. What, what's interesting about that yeah. is this new whistleblower that's coming forward, William Tompkins. He was writing his book selected by extraterrestrials and he released it in December of uh, 2015. He's about 94 years old now. He worked for the Navy. He had no idea of the information I was releasing, and uh, a person passed, right after he had published his book, a person passed my information that I'd given to him through Dr. Sala's book, Insiders Reveal Secret Space Programs and Extraterrestrial Alliances, and uh, he contacted uh, Dr. Sala and was shocked. He said he's a part of a Navy-sanctioned disclosure project and that he was going to be the first person to put a lot of this information out. And uh, he's pretty shocked. And uh, I I got his book. It it just arrived. I haven't got a chance to really look at it. But, uh, you know, a lot of people have been talking to him and the information correlates so well. It should be interesting. Uh, I was told that uh, whistleblowers were going to start coming forward. And uh, that was about seven months ago. And then I heard crickets. Nobody came forward. So I was getting nervous. And uh, there's another person that's being vetted, I heard about, and two more in the in the wings that uh, are being, uh, I hear, prepped to come forward that are uh, whistleblowers. So it looks like some exciting times ahead of us. Yeah, it's wonderful. I, Michael Sala talked to me about that as well. And I think, you know, he's giving a lot of technology. And, of course, we have this long history in the ancient aliens. And so, you know, you don't have to worry. I think there's going to be a lot more people coming out. One of the thrusts of this interview for me is to kind of lay a a groundwork and a foundation for these groups. When you think about, okay, we have the Earth-based alliance, you know, the good guys in the secret space program. I'm really concerned with their ethics and morals. Uh, They've tried to, as you mentioned, they bomb their way out of things. They're contentious towards you. You're at the Lunar Operations Command. 
They won't offer you healing. We have people down here on the earth, obviously, that have need healing. Some of them have woken up and feel guilty about their uh, things that they did under mind control and are concerned about mm -hmm. blowback and reactions. And it's a, a human condition. But And you haven't even touched the Earth Alliance yet. They're just as damaged of a group as what you've just mentioned. And, you know, these are considered the good guys right now out there fighting on our behalf while we're sitting here, you know, not doing a whole lot. Right. That's part of, I believe, our mission. My mission is to wake people up so that we can empower ourselves. There are a tremendous amount of uh, secret agents and, and guys who are working against this new world order that had tremendous loss of life and are very frustrated and have to live in absolute secrecy. And I'm sure some of them are, are hidden in underground bases and things of this nature. I wanted to ask you, maybe you could, um, one of the things I'm looking for is this somehow this plan of unity, but it seems so fractured with the surface population, you know, orienting towards a, a spiritual, you know, not necessarily pie in the sky, but a nonviolent view of uh, uh, transformation and change. Do you believe that there, it's possible that the spiritual vibrations and, and the, the Galactic Federation of 40 planets in conjunction with benevolent uh, inner Earth groups, if they're aligned properly at the right time, could overcome this um, artificial intelligence matrix? Well, yes, there is a plan for that. The artificial intelligence matrix is going to come down. It's it, There's a plan that it's all a part of, and I can't go into it. It's a... It's a and, and some people could probably extrapolate. It's a situation that will happen solar system wide. And uh, after that, we will be having a need to be working on a whole new type of technology anyway. So uh, it would be a perfect time to usher in the new technologies. Yes, I understand that they've done this on many worlds before, that these hostile groups that are kind of conjoined with this AI type of technology, I usually choose worlds that are not under confederation or alliance umbrellas, and they take over these worlds. They've had a lot of practice in what they're doing to us here. They don't care who's in control. Right, but they take who's ever in control, and they manipulate the situation behind the scenes. Would you agree with that? Yes, they manipulate things covertly until... They get to a certain place operationally, and then uh, they they become very overt and uh, and take over. But uh, uh, yes, the um, the this AI presence uh, permeates everywhere, and it's uh, it's an issue that uh, all groups have to deal with, and only very few groups have totally eradicated the problem from their area at all by finding a way to, you know, completely dampen their signal altogether from coming in to their region of space. Yes, I think this is one reason for the quarantine and one reason that I was told by the benevolence that they are very concerned. And in, in this uh, text that I've sent you, uh, Terracor Files, Bob Renau, uh, you can look that up, folks, T-E-R-R-A-K-O-R. -R you can read the history. He's revealing so, some of this information back in 88. And they have extreme, all of the benevolent groups are very concerned about this AI. They quarantine people who are on missions to Earth with, they do these technologies and psychological testings repeatedly, repeatedly to determine if this person has some sort of the AI which can infect them. So. When did this information come out? Uh, this came out in 1988. Wow. Okay. So now he's been underground. No, people don't know him. He spoke and, and gave information to Gabriel Green. He was receiving radio signals in the late 50s. He actually uh, has fallen in love with one of these beings and has been to their world. It's a very in interesting uh, series of information. Now, some of his technology, some of the information he was receiving, some of the negative forces came on an Earth-based hill and started projecting information with false information that he didn't discover for years. So it's a very cat and mouse game between these guys. He mentions that the good guys have a transponder net around the planet where they can teleport and beam out uh, an operative in moments. And it's not complete, and in uh, city areas it's more difficult, but their agents are here constantly working. 
They also revealed that what they do on many worlds is they infiltrate, they get within the governments, and then they attack the world and claim it's the Confederation. They do a minor infrastructure damage, but a lot of loss of life. And then they say, look, Earth people, why don't you sign alliance with us and we'll protect you from the Confederation. So the Earth, whatever the, the planet is, is they agree with these guys and they sign up and they don't realize that they've made a pact with the devil. Kind of like, like you could say we've done, yeah? Yeah. I mean, see, with all, all these different narratives and stuff floating around, I mean, we can see why this community i mean we are chasing our tails you know uh right now looking you know there's more information than ever and more important information than ever out there for us right now but there's just so much information and so much information that's just slightly different or some information that conflicts or here and there and and it and you know for the average person out there that's in this uh community it is confusing as heck enough. And now imagine the sleeping masses out there uh, approaching them and, and, and with information and trying to get some of this information disseminated to them when they've been uh, socially programmed with a giggle response to anything. If they hear a word uh, non-terrestrial or uh, unidentified flying object, you know, so, I mean, this uh, as humanity, you know, we've got a lot to overcome in, in this disclosure pro uh, process. And as a community, you know, that, that lens I was talking about the, 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 that we use as a filter, you know, about what is true, what is not true, yeah. what we're, what we're going to uh, allow into this reality bubble of ours to let it expand or not. Well, we've got to, you know, not throw away the, that uh, filter that you know we've created over time but what we need to do is kind of put it in our pocket and say you know what none of us have the truth the full truth we have bits and pieces of it uh you know when it when it comes and when we get full disclosure i don't care who you are cobra me anyone out there that's uh, out there given information they're given information as they experienced it when we get full expo exposure, uh, full disclosure, every single one of us is going to be set back on our heels and we're going to have to adjust to a new reality. But we're going to be far more prepared than all of the sleeping masses out there. And as the star seeds, as the people that are more consciously prepared, we're going to have to deal with this new, the new reality that occurs and then we're going to have to move out there and and help all of these people that are going to be shocked and we're going to have a hard time with the full disclosure narrative um and as david said there are going to be people that aren't going to want to get out of bed and are going to be you know wanting to you know take xanax and uh you know curl up with their pillow and uh, lay in the dark and, you know, you're going to have to make them get out of bed and take a bath and eat and that kind of thing. You know, there's yeah, there's going to be a little bit of that, Yeah, it's, you know, but but the, but, you know, they say that we can't handle disclosure. But we Laura Eisenhower said something, you know, we have been handling all of their uh, false flag wars and all, all their disease and all the stuff that they've been doing. We can handle disclosure. I absolutely. It, will, it, it, it will be rough, but we can handle it. I absolutely agree with you there. We can handle the truth, and, and it's just a, a ploy by them to hide their crimes, continue their selfish behavior. These reprehensible beings are criminals, and they do need to be arrested. I'd like to announce, you mentioned COBRA and unity and how we need to come together. We all have parts of the truth. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I can confirm now that uh, Corey has agreed we will be sending a joint COBRA interview sometime later. I have one more thing I'd like to address here and have a question for you because I've watched your interviews very carefully and you talked about the artificial intelligence infecting a computer and it lies nascent within a planet and it touches. It seems as though this artificial intelligence which exists in the internet would infect everyone and you kind of make it seem like you you don't get infected that it's harder to get it seems like every single person on the planet is infected to me uh and that's cobra some of cobra's information is about the scalar plasma field technology of how this artificial intelligent acts in a parasitic relationship to the luminous body that we talked about so 
clear for me, you kind of made it sound like you can go on board and they can see that you're not infected. Yes. How does someone know if they're infected or not if they don't have this technology? And it seems like, how can not everyone be infected now with the way that um, the internet and the uh, smartphones and everyone's touching this technology? Obviously, they're infecting everyone. Or does the infection come and go? Exactly. Everyone is potentially compromised, but it it's in a state of totally, you know, traveling around and it's it's very dynamic now if you happen to be a person if it evaluates you and you're of no operational use to it then it's it's not you know going to waste time on you yeah the programs you're you're uh, eating uh, then it's it's not you know going to waste time on you yeah the programs you're you're uh, eating uh weaponized food you're sucking in the chemtrails you're smoking cigarettes you're um you know you're in the system big time and the signal does lock in with your bioneural field the biology of your body your neurological system you know puts off an electromagnetic field and within that field is where this uh signal hosts itself and there is equipment not available to us that can read your field and through that field they can also read all of your vitals and even your brain waves and uh, they read the field and look for any crossover of brain something in in the brain waves and something in the field to see if there's any crossover to see if it's normal and if uh, and if you show up as being positive then you have to go through a process uh, i don't know the full process but i do know it involves a, a moderate shock electrical shock to clear your bioneural field interesting well this actually this is very much in alignment with cobra now i want to ask you one more question on this before we end the show and uh folks we're going to do part two here right away and you'll be getting that next week but cobra has uh, mentioned and i totally agree with this that this artificial intelligence is not like the borg resistance is futile we have our super soul resonant field to connect into that can overcome this, although it's a very difficult process on this world. I want to confirm with you that this artificial intelligence reacts so quickly, it seems like it's its own intelligence, but it's actually a technology. And it's run by someone on a program. And it's an auto program, but it's still a program, and it can be crashed, and it will be crashed. Is that your understanding? Well, no. It is a life form that we do not understand, but it is a life form. There are a lot of different life forms out there that if they were to be given to you, you would uh, right now would not classify them as a life form. You would classify them as something else. But they are not a actual program or code uh, if this is a, an intelligent signal and the intelligent signal um, it is most comfortable in and able to do more it uh, inhabits in te- in electronics and technology, yeah, in technology. technology. so uh, but it, it is uh, it, it is it is not a program now the nanites um, are programmed some of them are programmed and some of them our nanites are just drones for the AI signal, which is being broadcast. Absolutely. So, okay, well, that's interesting. It's going to be interesting when Cobra and you discuss this information. And uh, this one in particular, I think, is a, a, is a unique one. It's sounding like Terminator and Star Wars, and it gets really scary. When you think about, you know, you look at all of this negativity out there, and, and to lend a little lightheartedness to the end of this conversation, you know, I, I kind of think like, uh, I think back to David Spade and Saturday Night Live, who's in charge? And, you know, it's the church lady. He goes, mm, Satan. So um, I'm kind of curious, uh, maybe we'll get to this in the next uh, interview, if there is a specific uh, a group that are doing this service to self and uh, the numbers of them versus the benevolence. And I want to address in the next interview a little bit about the uh, super confederation of the positive guys that are nonviolent, that are the hippy dippy, that do come from love and are trying to heal the situation in a nonviolent way and their position and their numbers versus the um, the other guys. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been fascinating. Corey, I want to thank you so much for this first interview. We barely scratched the surface. I've got lots more questions. Thank you so much for coming on here today, and uh, we'll see you again thank next you. week. 
All right, folks, uh, another update. I do have a Mount Shasta summer conference going on with Louis Martens in Mount Shasta. When this comes out, I would like you to uh, check that out. We have a uh, at the end of uh, July, Louis uh, is contacted with Michael Sala, and he is in contact with uh, some of the benevolent civilizations from South America and Bolivia. Um, and uh, we'll be sharing some of uh, that kind of uh, viewpoint with the positive physical Venusians on the planet Venus. And um, more of a spiritual nature, kind of uh, in a boot camp training Kind of like Corey Good's secret space program, but more aligned along the uh, spiritual lines of developing our luminous selves and the pituitary and pineal gland and uh, to prepare ourselves for direct contact with these higher vibrational beings. And it's pretty cool, folks. Uh, Corey uh, Good.